follows pretty much the same model that was in the search for the perfect swing and in the golf machine. Um, okay, and I know there's there's also more ad uh, thrown in there, which is a byproduct of, of the golf machine. And, and Max philosophy was to take what was in the golf machine and, and organize it and more and refine it even further and build upon it. So no different than the Copernican theory that almost got Copernicus shot, which was um, <laughs> sun is not the center of, or not shot, but killed, wasn't the center of the universe, but the earth, uh, earth wasn't the center of the universe, but the sun was the heliocentric model. It wasn't perfect, but you know, Galilei, uh, uh, was it Kepler built upon it by saying there were ellipses, not circles. All right. And then here comes Galileo that says, well, well, we've got another, we got a great telescope and then someone else figured out, oh, there's going to be another planet over here and all of a sudden Neptune was found. So was Copernicus wrong or just did it need more refinement? So um, I would say that if you look at the golf machine, look at the search for the perfect swing, the double pendulum model is pretty much the only model that's available for golf um, and it's 70 years old. So what's the double pendulum model? It's actually right there behind me. Um, so you've got a double pendulum. You have to, First, all radiuses emanate from the center. Uh, as an engineer, you can appreciate that, you know, the, the geometry. So if we're putting pen to paper, the left shoulder would be the center of the swing. That would be the center. The radius emanates from the center. So the left arm would create a single pendulum. We've got the club on the end of, uh, end of a grip. That's going to be the second pendulum. So you got a double pendulum. And then we're going to attach that double pendulum to a third segment via the, the clavicle basically. So you've got a double pendulum with a third segment. So this, the, the center of the shoulder turn is what the center of the golf swing turns around, right? So how do you turn one center around another center? You, you, have, a, you have an attachment there. And then you have a lower center, which is the pelvic, uh, the center of the pelvis that translates forward. So if you, if, you, if you told me how to write this down, I would say it's a double pendulum model attached with a third segment to a lower translating hub. And that model, I don't know anybody who disagrees with. Now, up until recently, there's been a, a kinetic model on around the center of mass. And I'm a kinematic guy. If you follow any of my posts, I'm not a kinetics guy. I don't see the value of it. When you have the leading researchers, uh, um, uh, who is it? Uh, Dr. Uh, not, Doc, not Robert Neal, the other, uh, the guy who did a lot with the Olympics. I'm, I'm spazzing out on his, on his name. Um, I know that uh, McCann worked with Ari, uh, the Israeli Olympic guy. But that was no, here. No, he's an American guy. He worked for the American track and field teams. He's one of the top uh, biomechanical researchers in our industry. It'll, it'll come to me in a second. Okay. He, he said the biomechanical model, sorry, the kinetic model of using ground forces and center of mass is not useful. Kinematics are senior to that because knowing the time and place of the locations is far more important than the effect of those through the ground, especially because, you know, why are we, why are we taking the entire unit and lump summing the center mass of that, of a living organism? Like every segment, my, my forearm has a center mass, my bicep has a center mass, my torso has a center mass, like you have all these center of masses, and then you're going to lump sum them up in a, like a canoe versus a battle. Right. Right. So I think it's a lazy way to measure. And I don't think it's a very accurate way to measure because it's the reaction of the force. But then you get the people who are, I'll make both sides of the argument. Well, force precedes motion. Okay. And then they're arguing that it's the ground reaction force that's preceding the motion. No. Where's the motion come from? I can put a golf club on the ground here during our whole seminar and it will never move unless we move it. Right. It's just going to sit there. The ground's doing nothing. So just to balance an equation, up, which agreed. The, Equation is important to balance off. However, I'm using the ground as leverage, as we all are. But saying that if I push into the ground, the ground's going to push back into me and now add impetus into the system, that's a lie. So force precedes motion, yes. Muscular contraction is that said force that moves the joints. Those joints have an effect on the ground that a doormat with electronics on it can now measure the pressure and fire back, this is what you've pushed into the ground. To say that that push back into the ground is the senior cause of all the motion is nonsense. 
I mean, that is laughable. 